This is the Grandastic Podcast. I'll find it later when I have to do editing for it. All right, we are here. Welcome, John Elliott, to the Grandastic Podcast. We made it. We did it. We did it. It's 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 been a long coming for this especially um just recently we just got you here and everything and yeah i mean how's your day been uh it's you know i told you that i'm kind of like displaced from the apartment for the moment yeah and uh woke up in this very we we live like way out in the richmond by the water Mm -hmm. so woke up in high rise downtown and it was so nice to get out the window and or out the door and on my bike and like have the sun and the the ride over here was awesome heck yeah it was just great and then i got here and i didn't know that there was video y- yes yes <laughs> yes <laughs> so a couple things about that one thing is this is ridiculous and it's like I, the concept of like is this vain is it vanity what is that about is just really I think about I've been thinking about a lot recently mm-hmm. but for multiple reasons but like the guy that I love Mike yeah. who usually cuts my hair yeah had to get out of town and he went to Thailand for this like sojourn okay so okay. someone else cut my hair and I don't like it oh <laughs> I don't man. like how my face looks with it with it and so i'm like well that's cool because i'm not going on tour till may like it'll grow back out and then when you're like we're doing a video i'm like like why do i care about like i'm like oh my god there's gonna be this video forever where i don't like how my hair Mm. how dumb like what is that you know what that uh, first of all this is i love how we jump right into this because it's like some brings some spirituality psychological things you know like i think like because i feel that the same way you know like you want to present yourself in a way because like I think maybe anything like videos or even take vinyls like they're artifacts you know what I mean so you see this stuff and when you look back at this artifact you want to like be I don't know I don't, I don't know if the word represented but you want to look a certain way so you remember how you looked when you grow older maybe maybe that's oh what it wow is. that's crazy yeah maybe I took that a whole <laughs> Yeah, is it? Ju- but still, that is still just like like I've been thinking about this a lot since I got this haircut, and I'm like, I hate my, I hate this haircut, and I'm like, I hate how I look, and I look in the mirror, and I'm like, how's my neck? That's a, then you're like, we're gonna do this video, and I hadn't shaved, so I like shaved. Grant lent me his shaver, and I like trimmed my beard yeah. in his bathroom. <laughs> I trimmed my beard, uh, which is just it's just ridiculous. It's like embarrassing, and it's ridiculous, but it's like. You're putting this on the internet. This will be there forever. Yeah, when I'm yeah. dying, yeah. This when I'm dead, it'll still be up there. Yeah, unless you know uh, YouTube takes it down for some weird reason. But hopefully yeah, or not. else like yeah, unless all right, our don't species. Pay, yeah, or, or yeah, we die, all die from a you know giant meteor. I've been thinking that with these recordings because I've got this recent theory recently that recent theory recently that <laughs> time uh, twister <laughs> a recent theory recently that the vinyl and the CDs are fine, but it's just bringing more plastic into the world. And most people are consuming things with the mm, streaming, right? Yeah. So I've been putting things and saying it's, it's streaming, but if our species explodes or something or all those, where are they stored? They're on databases in the cloud. The cl- it's just the cloud. Yeah. As everyone says, you know, which I don't know what it means. I guess it's just, it's just some server somewhere. Right. But, but um, if those get blown up or something, then all those, works are gone but it's, it's everything's gone i mean that's why you gotta get your music to space <laughs> yeah well i was thinking about that yeah. what if if what if we have to leave the planet yeah and then they bring the databases or the clouds get copied or whatever that's what and i'm now, saying that's what i'm saying then you have yeah. it somewhere like like you think your your stuff is safe here but if this world's gone where you know i mean you gotta get to somewhere else you gotta yeah. have it multiple copies like Fuck, maybe somehow get your copy to give it to NASA and they can just leave it in some base. So if some other living life form is there and they pick it up and somehow they know how to put a CD into something or a vinyl or whatever, yeah. 
they can figure it out. Can I talk one more time about the appearance thing? So yeah, like, yeah, go for it. So do you have things about your face that you look in the mirror and you're like, I don't like that about my face? Or like... I think when I was younger, yeah, for sure. But then when I got older, you know, I, <laughs> I, just, I just like, you know, I don't know. I think like, I believe in like, you look, a, you, look your, you look a certain way for a reason, you know, either from your parents or, where, you know, yeah, from your offsprings, yes, from your parents. I don't know why I'm making it sound like maybe from your parents, 100% from your parents. Yeah. And, um, you know, like, I think about, like, because my mom was saying this after me, which was actually funny how you brought this up, is that, you know, um, my grandma passed away a few years ago when I was in college, and uh, she always told me, like, I had her eyes. And, like, that's the uh. thing that, I, like, I always thought, like, you know, she's in me, she's within me or something like that, you know what I mean? So there's some things that, you know, and then my, like, I have a little bit, you know, bigger ears you can see here, but, like, that's from my grandfather's side of my dad, and that reminds me of my dad, so there's oh, certain things. Oh, I love that, So you know Grant. what, so you know what yeah. I mean? So there's certain things where it's like, I wish I didn't have it, but then also I'm representing a heritage from these people from two sides of the family that they, they their lives keep living through me. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that's where you wanted me to take that. I love where you took it. I mean, what I was what I was thinking was whatever you see when you look in the mirror and think about is not what other people see. Nobody else sees that or thinks that. Yeah. You know, I like it's just so weird how we get caught it, up in it's, these It's weird especially this younger generation, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, because I have, oh my God, I, I, have yeah. I have younger siblings who are in college and my brother's pretty at granola, you know, just like out there, outdoors, he's fine. My sister, on the other hand, like lover to death, goes to Berkeley, but does the whole sorority thing and just like that whole like how you look and how they dress. And yeah. it's like, I never understood that because like I don't feel like you're being your true self. You, you're just trying to wear a mask just to fit in with all these other people or you get, you know, surgery just to that's look a certain yeah, way. I can't, get, I can't you, understand. That. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, why change your natural beauty? Like, so what if someone doesn't think you're attractive or whatever, but the next person will, and then that, that person is meant to be. Why try to change for someone else? That's not self-love. Yeah, maybe that's, I mean, I don't know when mirrors were invented. Yeah, you, you do, but I think that's when it all started. I know. When were they? Do we know? 1800s, I'm assuming, right? Can like, we look? Yeah, look at, well, my phone's gone. My oh, your phone. phone's gone. My I, phone. I can look it up right here. Look it up. Get, get it on there. Here, we can pull it up right Because, here. yeah, if that would be... I guess you know before that it was looking in lakes or streams or something, but yeah, and and I don't even know. Four hundred BCE. Fuck. Four thousand. Four thousand. Sorry. Old school. Sorry. Yeah, not four hundred. Four thousand. Okay, but even then, though. I think. I guess there's always been con conventional beauty for any given time. Like there's yeah. always that thing that like larger women in the Renaissance, I think, yeah, are considered yeah. attractive. So yeah, no, no, exa exactly, yeah. exactly. And mm. now it's just like, and I think it's because like also take the Kardashians, you know, and those types of people, and how they got into the whole plastic surgery, or you know, um, the the Cuban butts or whatever. Like people yeah. want like those like that certain look, and it's like you want plastic. Like I don't want right. plastic. Yeah, I don't no. want that feeling. I want natural and just how you look and. Um, I, I believe in, like, I do think it's important to, like, A, like, you know, be yourself. If you want to eat that fat fucking burger, eat that fat fucking burger right, right. and do what makes you happy. And then, of course, somehow stay healthy in some ways. Do some activity so we don't, like, collapse or whatever. But, like, you know what I mean? Like, live your live your bliss is basically what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, man. I don't know why I just got emotional when you were saying that, but I'm just thinking, God, yeah, I've been, like, so hard on myself for – it's it's the ment we just talked about it COVID and everything like it's just so easy to like get in your head and everything yeah. and just like just think a certain way and I was having this discussion with my neighbor over here we we went on a walk yesterday and um we were just talking about how it's so when you're not around other people it's so easy to get inside your head and just talk shit and just thinking about like, yourself hey, about, no no exactly about yeah. your, that's that exactly and just like not even just giving up. Yeah. And I like I think maybe saw like I and then if you have it I'll show you afterwards on my whiteboard I have a whiteboard and just like has like long term goals short term goals and then ideas and like someone was saying this I saw on Instagram this artist I follow and 
he was saying the, the key to success, and this could be just not through music, it could be like being a lawyer, doctor, whatever, is your friends, having a good positive circle, like they give good energy, yeah. and being surrounded with them constantly. Like yes, of course there's a balance where you need to like understand, have your alone time, and then refresh and stuff, but like yeah. make sure you're constantly somehow seeing them throughout like the week or whatever, yeah. because with people who care and then also give you good like who push you and critique you in a like a constructive criticism criticism way it motivates the fuck out of you and i've been realizing like sometimes if i don't have like a a client or doing a podcast here or something or if i'm not at hide uh i i get lazy i'll just somehow somehow the tv gets on and then seinfeld's on and i'm watching kramer seinfeld, that's what and i then, want then that's the best show baby i'm kramer all the way <laughs> i'm here for it and then and then i'm not and then i'm not doing anything for the rest of the day oh and then God. i look at the time and i'm like fuck it's already five and i just haven't done and then i'm just like oh. yeah but also it got you through whatever that day was you got to yeah. give it credit for that i mean so you can't always be yeah i was feeling that today actually i was like man i'm stoked i got like I got I'm going over to Grants. I got stuff I'm doing. This is a great day. I got mm. I've got the bike out. I'm going. I've Heck got like yeah. appointments lined up. Sweet. That every year the holiday season really derails me because it's just this weird. Yeah. Like everybody kind of stops doing stuff. No, or definitely. People have stuff going on and just the whole thing gets weird, and then it's like, all right, cool. Well, we did that, and some people are are. It doesn't derail them in the same way. They're just mm. cool. That was vacation, and now people are a lot some people just handle that but i'm like really a prisoner to routine and mm. like um prisoner in a good way like what's a good version of prisoner uh um, um probation <laughs> i don't i don't know if that's i don't know if that's a good that's a good prisoner i guess a captive is that i guess prisoner of a i'm really like inspired by routine there we go. i guess there we like, go let's go with that yeah one. it's like you know so um here i'll take this opportunity to talk about the new album but in there this context we go. there we go have you ever heard the thing that if you're just openly having to be creative if it's like make whatever that can be stifling that can be paralyzing yeah. because it's like how do you even you know it it really does and that's why i like working in groups i realize just because oh, really? because um i don't know like yeah i can come up with like ideas or chord progressions or whatever but like i really like for me, I'm realizing for just for myself is that I need a good percussion. I need a good drum beat yeah. right behind me. So I've been trying and I've been meeting a lot of like good drummer, like jazz cats and then rock and roll cats and just like different. So like, and then they try to have them come over and they either try to play the drums that well on my like, you know, software or get them into high street, which I prefer always. Yeah. And uh, then they're just laying the beat for me and then I can go and play guitar or something on the keys real quick. And then you got a jam session. I like the jamming because then that's where ideas just come in. You're just noodling around until something like catches. Yeah. So that's uh, interesting because that's the that I'm I am totally down for that and that's like the opposite of what this recent thing was <laughs> because it grew out of the lonely solitary period yeah. and playing mm -hmm. songs on the piano and so when I when I started to think about maybe making something it was like well the frame what's the what are the what's the frame on this one and it's like what if it's just piano and my voice mm. what if there's not what if it's like here's a here's a piece of paper and a water coloring brush and like some colored pencils mm -hmm. and that's it make something with that and that ended up being like really i was like oh yeah okay cool because i dude i'll go crazy with Maybe a xylophone and a. Oh, bro, it, you, you don't can, you, you, I don't get me. I try yeah. to go with the most eccentric instruments ever, totally. yeah, just to make it stand out. Because like, I don't know, you could do a lot with a guitar and a piano, or you know, or just like uh, drums and stuff. But I love like you know my main instrument, as you know, is is the sitar. So like yeah, which something is awesome, something yeah. so different, and then taking their Eastern theory here, or like you're saying, or even um, getting like the tabla or something. Eastern theory. Yeah, that's a whole discussion of its own. Just Talk about it a little bit. Um, so you know, like how in Western theory, like um, everything's just, just it could be just just sharp, just flats, or just yeah, yeah, no sharp and flats. Right over there, um, sharps and flats are connected together, so they're in the same scale. Which Meaning. Is, yeah. Exactly. 
They're just played all together. It's like modes. A, a, basically, yeah. And so with the sitar, hmm. you I, you can have up to either 19 to 23 strings. Right? Currently, I have 20 on mine. Well, you can pick... Yeah, the oh, that's but, cool. And well, because there's there's two different styles. Like they they call it the Ravi Shankar style, which is you know like what the Beatles learned from Ravi Shankar, which is like down the south, the southern part of India, and in the northern part of India, which is the Vlai Khan style, is the style I learned, and it's more like it follows the voice, and um, so I play lesser strings, and I like because you take away a string that I I don't play, it's an extra bass string, and then you have the sympathetic strings, these like harmony strings underneath so the note you play it resonates down below with the other strings so it shoots back up huh. so it creates these beautiful harmonies um wow when playing yeah afterwards i'll play for some for yeah you. please do yeah it's a cool thing if you ever need a sitarist i you know That's, i'm here well now that the the watercolor yeah. frame yeah album is made now it's back to the oh yeah, Fuck I can yeah. the next one especially <laughs> needs to be like drum it needs to have groove and yeah yeah, yeah. Come record here, High Street, whatever. We'll make it happen. Awesome. We're here to make it happen. But yeah, let's. I'll, we should first going. I love how we started this com this uh, this video. But for people who don't know who you are, should I play a song? Let's play a song and then let's okay. go into like what got you into music okay. afterwards. Oh wow. Okay. Well, let's see. Um, what do I want to play based on what we just talked about? Um, or I just want to play this one. I just want to play this one. I've had chances, I've had luck I've had friends who care for me I've had reasons to give up And a loving family I've had places where I live With a zip code and a bed But I never I've been all around this planet I've been hot and I've been cold I've been inside the offices Where lives are made and sold I've had a lot and nothing Then I had some poor man's gold But I never had a home until When my arms were empty, I had nothing left to lose, no one to come back to, and nothing left to lose. Now that I have something, I want to keep and own, I understand how easy it was just to be. I sat inside a church and I heard the preacher growl Then I traveled in a caravan and I heard coyotes howl I lost myself in nonsense and I barely made it out Cause I never had a home until Then I lived inside the city And I learned the underground And I made it to the mountains And I hated what I found I lost myself No I hated what I found I prophesize and plunder Through the valleys and the towns I never had a home until now. I found the fancy scene 
I was cool and I was quick. I learned their names. They took me in. I was thin and I was hip. Then I lost it all one summer. And I really paid for it. And I never got it back. Not even close to what I had. No, I never got it back. Not even close. All the stars are empty. All the stars are dead. All the animals are dying. All the news is full of dread. There are reasons to be angry. There are reasons to be scared. There are reasons to believe in love that isn't even there. scratch my skin and women tell me true but I never had a home until you no I never had a home until you so beautiful thanks man oh my god that was like that was an honor to have that moment with you and i felt that that song and especially the women part 100 percent that part for sure out here <laughs> uh, i'm not gonna say names but yeah for sure i mean women and men i mean you can change yeah. the genders oh, or whatever oh, you oh 100 100 percent yeah i didn't even t- uh, we didn't have we haven't even gone there yet about my son but that that's a different story of its own mm-hmm. um i guess two questions i guess one's about the song and then one's about the music i guess maybe we'll do a song because we just did that is that <clears throat> what inspired you with that particular song like do you remember the day i where... know exactly <clears throat> i mean so yeah maybe i'm sorry if that just if i just peaked you with my throat clearing it's fine um yeah i mean you know sometimes it's like songs happen is like an improv sometimes the music comes first whatever that one was very much the words it was the great highway which is out by where i spent most of that lockdown time and i it, that time was the first time in my whole adult life that i wasn't moving around a bunch i mean mm-hmm. that was like the longest consecutive time i was in one place ever and yeah. i completed a whole cycle of the seasons out there and like never got in a car for over a year and it was like this whole really deep connection to this place where we live which is currently present day called san francisco in what is it california united states but really it felt like a connection to just this peninsula of land floating by the ocean with Mm. this gorgeous park and all this and that was just that was home you know and it was like the middle of 2021 and i suddenly had all these bike tour plans and i was going to leave for like months for the first time in a long time since before the lockdown Mm -hmm. thing and so i was just biking up and down the great highway and i was thinking Ah, yeah, that's when it happened. And so I, I sat on a bench and wrote the lyrics down. And then, Sweet. then like a couple of days later, I sat at the piano and figured out the, the song. Heck, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was very, that's a very specific one. There was no like long process or revision mm-hmm. or anything. It was like I had that feeling. I had the, 
the thought to write it and then sat down and write it. And that's like, I, I read this in a Rolling Stone magazine when I was like 14 or something like mm. that. But it was like Neil Young's advice to Pearl Jam that Pearl yeah. Jam was like, this is the best thing we've ever heard, which is if you have the impulse to create or to make something, do it right then. Mm. Follow, don't make a little note on your voice memo. Yeah, just do it. I, I, I feel <laughs> this that. The, this, I got this ridiculous watch now. It's like you could do it on your voice memo or your phone or whatever. Mm. But like pull over, sit down, pull out your journal, write until you're done. Mm. And then it exists. Now yeah. that song exists. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Because like you think you can come back to that idea, but the idea is gone in that it's moment. It's gone. The, the it, magic moment of creation and, yeah. is fleeting for sure. And that's why I always like, yeah, like you're saying, try to record something. And if, if I'm not here, then just take my phone and video record myself just so I can just remember looking at wherever the chords I'm playing just because. Yeah, but even that, Grant, like I don't, I've you, got hours of voice memos of me doing that. And it's just still not. And I even, I'll even say in the voice though, like, uh, could, you know, B strings tuned to A flat, whatever like I'm doing that I'm like, this is yeah. so cool. But if I don't sit down and actually work on it and make it something, it's in my, it. for me, this is different for yeah. me. I, I don't go back to it. It goes away and it just doesn't happen. Yeah. Okay. I feel that. I think. I don't know why. It's like, I don't know if it's like. Because it, it's, 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 a, it's an appreciation moment you're having right now with yeah. you and your other spirit inside of you. And like, so why? And it when you guys are like intertwined why miss that opportunity i guess is what i'm trying to get at yeah because you got some place to be or it's yeah, like that's what happens you got it yeah and maybe that that is why whatever one's got lost maybe i had some place to be i don't know and that day i didn't which is something i loved about that this that is a, time man it's I a beautiful that. song and something you point out shout out to damn because when he uh came onto the podcast he he mentioned something about like he just loves his city and like you're talking about yeah. just something about here in northern california is something magical like you know you have the city life but then also golden gate park or mere woods or mm -hmm. tahoe or whatever you can just get out and just like yeah i cycle as well mm -hmm. so just like love it and just I like love it. you know what i mean because like i need to clear my head sometimes because if i do this studio stuff for hours I go insane. I know oh, they, I know. Yeah. You are. You get it. as a musician. Yeah. You know, you need like a balance. And as a cyclist, I yeah. mean, like, dude, what I think about, I don't know how I managed to, well, argue questionably, I didn't maintain my sanity. Like before I had that outlet of just riding with the wind in my face and the sun, man, you need that. You need, yeah. it's so good. It's just like, it's so, and your body's moving. And oh you're, it's yeah. It's so good. It's so good. Heck yeah. No, I've been, hey, we have to go cycling sometime because I've been trying to find someone to go cycling out here with. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, and again, like, yes. And then immediately what I think is like, how would that work? Because we're both on our own journeys. Like, do you just slow down or do you say, like, let's meet at this? Like, part of what I love about, what I've loved about that is you can do it by yourself. You don't have to like mm. go to a pool and check in saying. and yeah, swim. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Or like the gym, it's like get the membership. Well, no, I when I when I think of cycling with people, it's just like we both meet at a starting point and then you both go to the end point and you go your own pace. And if one gets there before, you just chill out or whatever, smoke some weed or whatever. Or we should we should go from. Have you done that like JFK to Great Highway and back? I have not. Grant. Fuck. Okay, this is a date. We're gonna do this. We have to do it on a weekend. It's got to be afternoon on Friday because the powers that be have put cars back on the great highway during the week for now. But uh, on the weekend, they're gone. Dude, oh my God, yeah. this is happening. Yeah. You hear that, folks? He said it here. Happening. Hell yeah. <laughs> Fuck it. That, I'm down for it. But then going back to like music, Yeah. do you remember the age you fell in love with music where you're just like, I want to do this? <sighs> that To me, those are different that's an interesting that the i mean people ask that question a lot but the way you phrase it i want to specifically answer which is an interesting one because i don't think when i l started learning guitar i was thinking ah, i must have though on some level like because i did it i really worked at it it's like it came naturally to me and i wanted to do it mm -hmm. which was when i was seven and i was 
learning sweet riffs. Yeah, yeah, you're learning you know? your favorite songs and yeah. everything. Yeah, but I, but um, it was later that. Well, actually, you know what I think is when I really think about that question, I think about I was like 21 or 20 or something like that, and I went to New York for a little bit, and I I wasn't feeling it really, and I had friends out in L.A., and my family's from Minnesota, and so I was like, I think I'm going to go to L.A., mm -hmm. and I went via drive that car. I went via, yeah. this is good, I drove my car via Minnesota. I stopped Perfect. at my parents' house. Perfect. Hell yeah. And I wrote this song called Minnesota on my, in like the bed that used to be my room, but now I don't live there and mm -hmm. had, you know. And that was, that moment is a special moment to me. I felt like I, I discovered songwriting and like my own voice, like the little like, inkling of my own voice mm. there mm -hmm. and it felt a little bit like something kind of came together in that moment i think that's the answer to that that's, question yeah no definitely because I, I feel like consciously or unconsciously like you use this there's like a sense of when you do it like because some people do it and it's just always like a hobby for them you know and they they know they're going to be a business person but there's some people like like us out here where it's just like this is it like this is our love I like know. there's nothing else. so I, I get that I've been thinking that with this whole um, like apartment renting thing where I'm mm -hmm. like I wonder I wish and wonder had there been a way to make like a lot more money so I could Keep own talking. a place yeah there's what just, is there like a bird there's or something? a bird and it's, it's, it's just <laughs> we gotta get the away. bird it's just a high we gotta get the like, bird where is he <laughs> you and me right there <laughs> So what's his day like? His day is just to make it harder for me to edit, go into the, into the audio, and maybe use isotope and just try to go into those little chirps and just pluck them out. I guess there, there's got to be like a plug-in that'll identify that. Oh, there it is. Out. There, there. I'm gonna, we're gonna have to use it because I'm not gonna manually do that shit. What do you that, use, isotope? Isotope is yeah. the base. It's the RX9 or something like that. Yeah. Um, and then just go in and then just like. <laughs> Find one of them and yeah, say, get rid of this thing. Exactly. There, there's like a, there's like a new update, like RX, I think 10 or something, where it's just like, it has AI in it. So like it scans it and then it finds it and it takes it all out. Is this waves? Is this a waves? No, no, this is, no, this is isotope. It's the company. Oh, it's an isotope. I don't think I know this one. So isotope. This is a good one to know. Yeah, no, isotope. It's a, actually, I think native instruments bought isotope. I do recall. I don't know. I don't know if I'm 100% on that, but they're a company called Isotope, and literally in the word Isotope, like they just help with uh, editing to like for post work or pre work, whatever. Just like so, like dialogue is really good for, or like if you don't like when you like when you talk, if you breathe, you know, yeah. while you're singing, it, it's really good taking that stuff out. Wow. So yeah, this is like yeah. another version of the vanity thing. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, it really is. We're like curating our appearances and our. Well, what I was gonna say about the mirror thing, and then the. It's something about the smartphone and the replication of all these moments and faces that has gotten us really heady about it. Yeah, I feel like it was different, even in print. Mm. It was different, but maybe not. I mean, maybe like, I don't know. Who knows? I think I think definitely I think there's like a there's there's a, there's definitely a technology has been has made a big play into it for sure and like especially like with YouTube now and like with like or not YouTube I guess short clips they call them on YouTube or reels or TikTok like yeah. like the tension span everyone wants the shorts and everything and I hate like a I just don't feel like doing the edits and then b like even with the podcast I just throw everything in and if I like you know take a second or if there's a pause or I'm trying to figure out you know my sentences or whatever i'm just like i don't give a fuck i just don't want to go in i want to keep it organic and natural yeah. because people it's so easy to take short clips and then change what that person is saying and it's like that's fucked up so i just went through that with the for the album stuff i like made these reels and as i was editing things and doing them i was like this is so crazy it's like some man some team at meta formerly facebook decided that I have to now edit this to 60 minutes in order yeah. for them to share, or 60 seconds. Yeah. In order for them to share it or whatever. It's just, it's it, very strange. It's very strange. And like, 
you, you made a cool comment <laughs> while you were shaving while we we're talking, which I loved. Was uh, <laughs> well, I was <laughs> yeah, um, um, is that like when I was saying when I was telling you, yeah, I'm a hippie or whatever, and you're like, yeah, you're a hippie too, and you're saying, like, I'm a hippie as well. I was like, fuck yeah, and it's like, you know, like something about the 60s, since like I think it's like late 60s, early 70s, like they didn't give a shit about that, they were just living their truth, and I feel like people have lost that, you know, they they. They're well, then they became the baby boomers. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it, that's a. Who knows mm-hmm. what they were, what any given time in history was, because it gets written and the narratives of it get told with all kinds of different mm-hmm. um, motivations behind how those narratives are being told, and it's, I mean, I get in this with my mom all the time because she's. She was born in 1950. She's like of that generation. Okay, yeah. And she's uh, more right wing and of the opinion that that was a great time and now is not. And, you know, I we were having a text thread this morning. I don't know what where what where if there's new texts, but we were talking mm. about woke. And I was like, that's not even a thing, you know, mm. whatever. But yeah. like she has this concept of that time, what it was like to live through that time that I can't know what it was actually like. You know, yeah. I wasn't there. I, I don't know. But she had a really interesting thing the other day where she was like, we used to, our bus used to like go past race riots. She's like, I saw from the bus going mm. to school that stuff. Wow. You know, well, I don't know. Yeah, that's the thing. You can, there's like a difference, like living, like being there and seeing it versus watching documentaries, talking to people. You right. know, it's not the same when you're physically seeing that stuff. So, yeah. And also, like, is it a riot? Is it a protest? Just yeah. whatever you call it, now mm-hmm. it means something different. Which is, yeah. I guess it's a, it's really just about trying to be present in the moment, which yeah. is so hard. Oh, you don't have to tell me. <laughs> I, we, so we, 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 we try. We have the Alan Watts books, all of that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Ram Dass, the whole deal. Like, it's a... Uh, Oh, you don't have to tell me. It's man. hard. It's so hard. It's not easy. Like, and it's something that you can't just like. Oh, I'm gonna learn this within a year. No, it's your whole fucking life. You're gonna have to try to be present in the moment. And it's like there's like a discipline aspect to it. You know what I mean? Of not like, you know, so you're, you're with someone and stuff, or like you're doing something, and it's like, put the technology away, even if you hear the ring. And if let's say like for me, for example, it's like if I'm talking to a girl or a boy someone whoever i'm dating whatever and they're um you know i'm happy when i get the text you're, you're giddy or whatever you want to use the word but it's like you're, you're present with these other your friends here so right. you, you, so and they're telling something important right now and they wouldn't tell you this if they didn't feel like you're an important person to them so it's like you know what i mean so staying present even though something great is happening here it's not going anywhere you know what i mean and it's like that's the biggest wow. thing yeah um, for whatever reason, my phone is in the pocket of my bike jacket, which is over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this whole time I've been with you, mm. there's been no... Even I was going to take it out for a minute to check on the mirror thing, yeah, yeah, and yeah, it wasn't yeah. there. Yeah. And I have no notifications come to the watch. The watch is new, dude. I got this to like track my exercise biking stuff. You like it? That's pretty much all it's good for. It. Well, And voice memos. Voice memos yeah. it's good for. I thought I was getting a watch, but then I was like... I was then I stopped because of the moment. I was like, no, this is gonna make it worse for me. Then I'm just looking at it. I know, time. I I might just get rid of it, but I, for now it it helps. It's good for the for the exercise thing. Mm-hmm. It's interesting to keep track of it and notice patterns. Maybe I'll get rid of it. I I also thought like it has like you get a free membership to the the Apple Plus guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I was like. I was visiting my friend at Taylor's Vispo and we did like a yoga class together. I'm like, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that. I did, I did one thing with some guy. It's just not my thing. Yeah. The I bike is my thing, dude. You get out. Yeah. It's easy. It's free riding, whatever. Yeah. I yeah. feel that. That's that's what's up. Okay. Yeah. Man, that's um, that's just a, like, it's great to, you know, when you meet people who get that. And I feel like there's a lot of us out there who understand like trying to stay in the moment. Like, it feels like living in San Francisco is all about the hustle culture, you know what I mean? And just trying to make money and this and that. But I feel there's a lot of us here, and it's just, like, trying to meet the community. Like, you, Dan, Stefan, 
Um, the Eve, money, Evan, you know, like yeah, the money thing is really. I feel like, well, is it at odds with trying to stay present, or can you? If you stay present, can you make more money? Because we're in a capitalist mm, structure, yeah. and if you're like really present and rocking it, definitely. I don't know. I've always wondered. You know, That's, I've had one yeah. job in my life where, where right when I first moved to LA, where it was like someone gave me money every two weeks, and in exchange for that, I went to the place. Mm. You know, everything else has been gig work or like catering or what, what? or what, like something where it's hourly and it's whatever but yeah. this thing was like be here at nine and every two weeks it was before direct deposit but like they came mm -hmm. around and just like handed you a check yeah like in your cubicle and you like yeah. grab the check like a fish yeah you know? yeah basically that's what it is exactly and it was man that i was not good for me that did not go well for my psyche I can, Trading I can. your time in that way, you know? Yeah. Because you had to be there. Yeah, it's a force. It's like school and everything, nine to five kind of situation. Yeah. yeah. But you said LA, so like going back to that. Yeah. Um, you lived down there for a bit? Yeah, for a, lo for a long time. I lived there for basically 11 years. Oh, shit. And then okay. two years in the middle there, I moved out and lived in my car and toured. Mm -hmm like perpetually basically okay and then what brought you to officially live here um it's a, it was a weird combination of things i a relationship ended mm -hmm. and i f had this feeling that it was time to change it up uh i mean it was more about leaving I, there was not really a conscious choice to come here it was more I needed to get out of there. And I didn't want, I wanted to stay generally in the West because I love it out here. Mm -hmm. And I had like some gigs up here and I kind of like went and did those. And then it just became maybe I'll, is there a way to live up there? I don't know. And then I, you know how when you're in those transition modes, you just kind of put it out there yeah, and things start. They they just ha they whatever happened, happened. Yeah. yeah so i put it out there and um this like crazy situation ended up uh appearing so i basically just like lived in soma in the 70 square foot loft maybe it was kind of illegal like you're supposed to be yeah, yeah, yeah. It's supposed to be a studio <laughs> not a live but yeah it was cool everybody was okay with it and that's what i was able to stay here and that like got me a whole new I mean, I love it here, dude. I, I, I it. really love it. I, I've i looked. My nature is to move on. and Yeah, same. I thought about moving to Nashville uh, yeah. two weeks ago. And then oh. a friend a friend uh, had a job opportunity to be like a studio manager and everything. And, wow. And I thought that would be cool. And they're trying to open up a studio. But there's something. And I, I mean, I haven't been to Nashville. And they we FaceTime and everything. And it was great. The conversation. And. The money was good and it's cheaper out there but there's something there's some spiritual fucking energy here that i just like waking up every morning and seeing the sunrise here and then the sunset and then just That's the fresh it, air man. It's just, I was just like, Nashville has nothing. It's just strip malls and everything. And like, that's fine. Like, if you like Nashville, I'm not shitting on Nashville. Nashville's amazing and everything. But, and also, I don't want to give up on the music in the Bay. Like, I think we, there, it's There's still, a whole new thing coming around, man. Yeah. I was walking around North Beach last night. And I'm just like, this is so weird. Like, all these closed buildings and like, for rent commercial like what is going to happen next yeah because it's I, not going any it's not like it's disappearing no something's going to happen here that like heady 2018 whatever the hell hoodies yeah. down in soma it's over Definitely. those guys left no exactly <laughs> you know and, and I, so it's like what is going to happen next i think and especially i think there's like you know look at elon taking twitter out and all these people are leaving i think you know like i think the word is like with like I'm trying to say like fashion. You know how like some trends they recycle them, they come back. I feel like that's what happened with music. So like 
music here in the 60s, the big psychedelic, you know, and then the punk in the 80s. I feel like... And the gay scene in the yeah, 80s yeah, was a huge yeah, thing. It, exactly. I think we're making another recycle, and I think music's going to be popping again here in San Francisco. I, mean, I think so, too. Shit is happening, of course, but people think... When you think of music, the cities, you think of Nashville, you think of L.A., you think yep. of New York. That's why I moved was, to L.A. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, I mean, did it for a year, because I have... You know, I have relatives and to let me crash at their place, but I just didn't, it didn't feel re- right for me. You know, you know that feeling. But coming here, it feels right, and I love all the people here. And I think you just gotta stay connected, full circle here. Find the people, you know, who give you that good positive energy, and everyone helps everyone. And then you just thrive together. And then what I love that you said about being here, mm-hmm. because I'm sure there are beautiful things. To living in Central Tennessee in Nashville. Yeah, yeah, of course. I know there's beautiful things to living in Lawrence, Kansas, because the most beautiful moonrise I've ever seen was over the river in Lawrence, Kansas. I, I believe you know it. I mean? Yes, I'm from the yeah. Midwest. All that, but the positives of here, mm-hmm. of this part of the world, mm-hmm. I just, I really feel it daily. Yeah. I mean, I exactly. I feel the sunrise. Yes. I feel the air. I love it, and like, dude. Yeah, if you're prioritizing that, if you're prioritizing uh, the music business, there's probably better places to be. Exactly. You know, I mean, it doesn't really make sense to be here right now or maybe at all. But that's that's the same mentality as those guys that moved here in 2015 Mm -hmm. to crush it for bongle or some whatever the hell thing yeah 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 and then they're gone they went to Truckee or they went to lake tahoe or whatever and that's not why i've ever been here it Mm -hmm. makes no sense for me to be i'm only here because i love it here exactly i think it every i'm gonna feel it as as soon as i walk down the stairs and walk outside Mm -hmm. i'm gonna feel the air i'm gonna bike up and around to the thing so i gotta go over there I'm going to get a sweet burrito somewhere. Hell I'm going to yeah. pay too much for it probably and be annoyed. Exactly. And there, 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 there's pros and cons with that. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, like you rent's overpriced for fucking sure. Groceries are overpriced. I feel like everything that goes nowadays is just rent or groceries. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it, it's fine because like what keeps me sane in, in like my happiness because that's like a huge priority for me is you guys the people here the fucking nature here and the 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 fucking culture the music the art the poetry the fucking you know the drags like i'm here for it all and you it's like a bubble that i just love and you know yeah there's crime and, and the homelessness and like the, nothing's gonna be perfect you gotta get this idea of like the perfect world it doesn't exist you just got it well if you're gonna throw a bunch of people together on a seven by seven seven mile by seven mile peninsula yeah. where the weather's nice it, it things are gonna go down I yeah mean, it's, exactly it's gonna... it, 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 yeah. You, you you should realize that and <laughs> yeah you know and like yeah you make a good and point. we got to figure that out oh go ahead no, no you go first because that's that's a great topic. i was gonna say we <clears throat> it's we have to figure out I was talking with this friend of mine, and it was this mm-hmm. really inspiring conversation because it was like, cool, you know, we're like the poster child right now for the rights, the shitty de- Democrat-run cities and mm-hmm. the fentanyl and all that. It's like, what if we figure it out? Yeah. What if we figure out how to house people and to help people that are having definitely addiction problems and to help people that are having mental health crisis? Like, what if we actually figure it out? Mm. And then we're like, hey, we figured it out. Look at this yeah. place. Yeah. That's and the way, I, I, in many ways, I feel like being faced with that on a daily basis is so important because mm. it is the America that we live in Yeah, 43 years or whatever after we began shredding the social contracts and beginning this like insane wealth inequality, which is now just like grotesque and yeah. obscene. And so, yeah, you can move out to the suburbs and never see it. That doesn't mean it's not there. Mm -hmm. We live with that. People, we spend $850 billion a year on the military, and we have people that don't have a place to live, a door and a roof. It's It's, fucked up. It's it's wrong. Yeah. Really is what it is. It's like by any religious metric, by any sense of morality or values, it's wrong. Mm -hmm. You know? And it's really sad. 
Yeah, I mean, and it needs to. There needs to be, like, California's. I think is doing a lot better than some other states for sure. But like, there's mm-hmm. like in, in general, there we can do so much better if we had the you know the funds and like, I don't know. Maybe there is a committee, but or but I think we need to get some fresh ideas in this committee and just like yeah, you know totally. what, you know what I mean. And there's just, definitely like, a committee, but it, you're right. Yeah, it, it could, we need I, to kind of like it needs to be some do, new blood on yeah, the committee. Yeah, I think it's just these old heads that are just haven't left their position and like. They're just thinking they are the best, but like, let's bring some young souls oh my in God, here. Oh, God, dude. I mean, like, I totally, yeah. I got involved in the committees with this bike activism during the pandemic, okay. like the slow streets and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I, I went to, I got on, I went to committee meetings. I met people that are on the committees, and Sweet. there are some awesome people, amazing people with like Sweet. really great ideas. And it's, and if we just did them, that's the thing we can do them but that's what was crazy about the slow streets thing is like the pandemic made it possible for jfk drive in the park to be permanently car free i know that was great that that was hundreds of years like they've been trying to do it forever yeah but because we just had to do social distancing whatever they did it and everything was awesome so there was a silver lining weirdly enough with covid and it proved that if you just do it if you yeah. just try it and that's the problem with like the committees like i love yeah. that word the committee yeah so good. yeah because what's it called the board of supervisors yeah yeah, yeah the yeah. committee is what it's, it is it's it's like, yeah, it's yeah basically i'm glad you liked it oh my god and they're just <laughs> meeting and meeting with each other yeah and like, they're just too much talking less walking you pro- know what I mean? yes process and we got to check in with these people in process and then you have to go to this person and after you go to this person you got to go to they just, they just they just like they're just what's the word they're just Lagging your tail or whatever. The, I'm, I'm fucking up. The yeah, well, I just, uh, that's working. I mean, there, and I met some of these park people and these like transit people, and you talk to them, and it's like, wait a minute, these guys are like professionals. They're experts. They studied this. Yeah, yeah. We don't need public. I mean, it's, you know, it's good to do a little outreach, but after the outreach, it's like, here's the outreach. Cool. What is the, what is the way to do this? Mm-hmm. How can we do this? Yeah, you know, definitely. can we just do it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, let's get let's get a committee of guys and gals that like know how to do this, and let's let them try it for five years. That's what I'm like. Yeah, we whoever's <laughs> listening to this or watches this, either one, and you are in this committee, please hit up John and I, and we can <laughs> maybe help you all out, or don't hit us up and go find some people who you think would be good person to replace you because i think your time has come to retire (laughs) yeah we got it we well that is a larger i mean when you look at the average age federally even locally we need younger people on these things yeah and we have to respect our elders and they have a place too but like we need to have yeah yeah it's just you know handling the situation correctly you know like not like stepping on anyone's toes and make sure they know this like this wave is coming you know versus like you like it's like you know you're surfing or whatever and also you see this fucking tidal wave coming like it just slaps you and then you're just underwater and you're trying to survive like let them know like see this wave coming a mile away it's coming and you can't stop us so just let's slowly start paddling inward or try to embrace it so yeah it's time it is definitely time to pass the baton there we go yeah to a new rat let us take a stab at it definitely Definitely. and we're going to do things a little differently in some ways and we're going to learn from mistakes but also be inspired by things that worked well Mm -hmm. and try to figure it out but we need to have a a fresh look at things it's not yeah, it's just not working well, right. Well, being how long have you been in San Francisco for? Would you say? Said this is now. This will be eleven years. Wow. In, I think like May or something. Like eleven that. years in LA. Eleven years in San Francisco. What happened? Eleven years in Texas or Chicago for you? I think it's eleven's your lucky number. Well, does that mean I'm leaving though? No, we're gonna make you stay. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna make you do twenty two or some shit out here. There you go. Dude, twenty two is my number. There you go. There you fucking. Well, that's go. the crazy thing. I mean, that's what that song's about. I yeah. I like it here, man. I like it here. I think it's possible. I guess I guess the question for artists, and I always ask this everyone who comes on. Um, either if I rec- if they're from here or if wherever city they're from, it's like, how? What's your advice for an artist who wants to do this as a career, but they don't, but they, they're a little bit naive and they don't really understand the financial aspect of like how much you have to really like do gigs and, or, because there's some people who I know who always talk to me, 
like my brother younger brother's like friends are like you think i can if i just gig every night i just possibly get rent instead of me having a a separate job and then i'm doing this on the side it's like well i mean it depends on do you have a like good presence to like a fan base but what's your thoughts on it yeah i mean that's a big one isn't it i mean the the first thing i thought when you were talking was that you need to have a tapestry of income my my experience has been that it comes from all different crazy places and yeah and it's a problem in the way we think in america Mm -hmm. you know you meet someone it's like what do you do yeah i've had a hard time with this my whole i tell i tell them i have multiple jobs you know what i mean yeah totally you do and and, and they look at me like why don't you just have one because i'm not in your situation where it pays big you know what i mean yeah you're not doing that i mean and that's that's a i feel like the artists the way artists have to do it is it just has to be this some comes from here some comes from here some comes from here those can all be creative things you know if it's like royalties gigs uh the christmas season whatever mm-hmm. i mean uh distro kid from spotify yeah, yeah. Bandcamp, patreon or yeah, the, all yeah, these whatever the things yeah. are and you can add it all up and that's enough to do your you know what are the things you need to do rent groceries food. groceries food you gotta keep the heat on yeah utilities, whatever yeah. and then beyond that you gotta get a burrito or two yeah yeah 100 like, percent. i mean that's really how that's how I've always thought about it. But I think that it's a little short-sighted, or not. that's not the right way to say it. That's judgmental. And this is me talking to myself, not just to yeah. anyone else. Mm-hmm. You have to be okay with, take, with working. Sometimes it's not a bad idea to take a job that is not totally related to music or the arts in order to stack some cash to give you some freedom of movement yeah. for your creative pursuits mm-hmm. because you know that the example that you're that person that said can i just gig all the time the answer is yeah probably um but what that's going to look like is probably restaurant gigs yeah. background music for some of those um i've always said you know like if i have to I'm not going to take another one of those every two weeks jobs unless it's creative or it's something that really feeds me. I can always go out and set up, open my guitar case and make some money. Yeah. Busking. Yeah. Now, can you add that up and pay rent? I don't know. I mean, yeah, man, it's tough. I mean, and it's harder than it's ever been before. You talk to guy, you talk to people that like, although they also couldn't release their music worldwide immediately. Yeah. So they're, the gatekeepers are gone, and that's a good thing and a bad thing. But it's just saturated now. Yeah. Oh my God. My friend said that one. This friend, this friend of mine that wrote a book about this very specific topic. Mm-hmm. He had this. We had this conversation. He was just like, I was thinking about you when I was doing this because I had all these publishers that were interested in this book because no one had ever written a book on this topic before, and I was thinking like, how hard is it to be a musician? There's no scarcity. There's millions and millions and millions of mus- of albums. And every day there's mi- no one needs another John Elliott album or another John mm. Elliott song. There's no market necessarily. It's all there. It's it's a, yeah. It, it yeah. I'm just doing it because I ha- I'm driven to do it, but that that uh, that really stuck with me for a while. It's like, oh yeah. Yeah, no. I feel that and like the, the advice to give my brother's friend or to anyone who's listening to this is that you know i i agree to what you're saying about me it's not so it's maybe it's not what you want you know ideally you don't like this other job that gives you some freedom but also it kind of helps you like taking a break i know? was just gonna say that grant you know? i thought that in my head is yes yeah, you know what i mean dude if you're waiting tables three days a week or four days mm-hmm. a week and you can put whatever your thing is let's say i don't know what's your band called let's say your band's called tell the truth okay you You got a band called tell the truth if you can and you're like worried about branding tell the truth and booking tell the truth and whatever Mm -hmm. you can and then at four o'clock three days or four days a week 
you just forget about it, go down to the place, and wait tables, yeah, make hundreds of dollars. Bingo. That's it's like meditation almost. I mean, yeah. that, you got to take a break. It's yeah, you, you can't thing. do it all day. Like it, it, it. <laughs> Also, can I say one more thing? Go for it. We're Everybody's here for got it. different. You really have to respect your own rhythms, mm. and yeah. I know guys who who really can. It seems like three hundred sixty two days a year. Just be on the road and tour and do that. Damn. And I tried doing that, and it really was not healthy for me. And so I have to respect that, mm. and I respect the people that can do that but i also respect in myself that it doesn't really lead to a healthy experience with the planet mm. i mean it's yeah it i don't know I, I this is a big topic the the, uh, yeah. the making if, if i were a young person younger than i am and i was like wanting to start and know how to do it i remember that feeling i mean i hated I hated that going to that job and then driving to rehearsal and then yeah it was but you're also younger you can do that you, stuff. you can do it now and just I think it teaches you there's a lesson to be learned by doing it I it think all, it, yeah there's like a discipline to it or something and it, you, there's really something to be said for the times when your money's coming from other places and yeah. you can make creative decisions just to make them yeah yeah. You don't have to think about definitely the bottom line of how to make the money work. Well, that's another thing. It's like like uh, how I know Stefan just because he, he you know band show, but also he was my teacher. Oh, cool. Um, at Pyramide. I don't know if you know what Pyramide is. It's huh. like a school. They teach you audio engineering and everything. Oh, he awesome. taught the business side of it. And uh, there is something that he mentioned. It's like you need to start like a Roth IRA. And I was like, what the fuck's a Roth IRA? <laughs> oh and he threw this at me. And he's like, well, you know, pensions don't exist in this industry. And I was like, a forward, and I was like, oh, my fucking God, Stefan. I mean, like, shout out to him for that. Because now we like we just put a hundred bucks a month, you know, in because, yeah, you got to like figure this shit out. So for those people who didn't even think about their retirement, there is no ret your retirement is whatever you make from your gig or your whatever. And it's like. You got to get ahead, man. Like, that's what I've been on lately. Just, sort of, like, trying to, because, like, right now, you know, I'm 24, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm like, blessed to still be on my parents, like, dental and medical thing. Oh, yeah. When does that end? 26. So, so, so yeah, 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 yeah. So, we're trying to, like, work, grind hard now so we can save enough so then we can get insurance before we have to switch to Whoa. that. Wow. Wow. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah, these little things that you don't think about because you're so like into. Well, and also because we don't teach them. I mean, personal finance, personal finance and nutrition. Yeah. We what should else? Be, it should be taught in schools. K through twelve, every yeah. day we should yeah. be doing that. No one teaches you how to like do your taxes or how or even how to like manage budget. Everything. Yeah, budget is a huge one, especially if you have, if you're a gearhead like me who just like. Oh my God! It's like you think, oh, I need this gear and this gear. It's like chill out. You need to look at the monthly budget. Yeah. Yeah, but you got some nice gear. And the other thing about the gear is you can always sell it. Yeah, that's it's the, like an investment. That's the thing. As long as if you take good care of the gear, it's, it, you can you can sell it for even more. So yeah, that's what I that's what I realized, and I've done it in the past. I also want to say about that is, been the north star for me has just been making stuff. Mm. creating and making stuff if you are just make stuff and if you have to have another job to have a place to live that's great that's that's most yeah. every artist throughout all exactly. of history mm -hmm. just do it and then make keep making stuff the the thing you can't do and you can also take breaks from making stuff but you can't give up making stuff i think you gotta you gotta make things definitely even sometimes if you're not inspired to make things like yeah write something down or just keep it flowing do something you know what i mean and like i've been doing this every friday i'm thinking about doing it every day because we're a group of friends and i go to christie field over here mm -hmm. the beach and then 
we'll do some workout or, or yoga and then we do this heavy breathing exercise and then we jump in the ocean for 10 minutes wow cool and then get out and then like there's something about your brain and it's just like if i'm being like in this like sluggish mood or just not feeling inspired every time i jump in that cold water i'm so inspired i don't, I don't know why maybe because my nips are blue yeah. or whatever but like i'm inspired man and it feels good and it's like it's like a weird cheat code like it's like a weird like free Adderall or something. I don't That's know. That's how I feel about the bike. But you, yeah, this too. You know is this I mean? a new thing? This is like a, no, it's a, it's, a, it's a huge thing. This dude from this Ice Man dude, whatever, he's been doing it, and like it's a whole culture wave. Yeah, now. there's People a. I'm it. hearing it. It's like. <laughs> People are doing it. Now. Yeah, I'm hearing it everywhere. People are plunging. They're cold plunging. It, it, but and I guess it's good for your immune system and all that. And I don't know about that stuff. I just won't do it for my brain just to wake me up because like, if I wake because you know there's some days when you wake up right where you just feel like. Uh, I'm just, I'm just, I don't know. I'm just a little lazy. I don't know if you ever feel like yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah yep. definitely. Yeah, and but for some reason, I just, I mean, at, at first, I'm like, oh, I don't want to jump in the water. Then everyone's like, just get in the fucking water, and I was like, okay, fine. And then once you get your whole head and everything, you feel alive, like rebirth. I don't know how to explain it. It's like, yeah, it's the best feeling, and it's it's free. It's right there. Yeah. So I don't know. Like that's been my like, I don't know where we are in this topic from like from the the question from my brothers but anyways the answer to it is get the job it's okay you need to take a break get inspired and if you don't oh if you don't feel inspired jump in a cold plunge that right you. that's where okay uh, yeah the answer the answer is also just keep keep creating because there's a great Kurt Vonnegut thing where he's like mm -hmm. write a poem and then tear it tear it up and throw it away because the act of writing it and mm, thinking about what you're yeah. feeling, that's what the gift is. Definitely. I mean, it's cool that these artifacts exist or streaming on Spotify or whatever, but really sitting down on that bench and writing that song that day mm, and, yeah. and like making myself feel and think about those things was the gift. Yeah, you definitely. You could argue. Definitely. And I think also um, doing these creatives okay we're good uh doing these like having these creative moments in different places like you're talking about like like a lot of my creativity is either in a studio but sometimes i can't do that i gotta be outside i realize like especially here because mm -hmm. like my bed is connected to this area mm -hmm. it's i feel like i'm not in a different like you know place but if i go outside or if i yeah. go up to my like roof i bring the guitar or the sitar like i'm like in a whole different mindset and i feel more creative i don't know why yeah, that yeah. is like rooms and stuff yeah, well, wherever you are, I mean, that Golden Gate Park, like the things that's, we have, that's great. In, yeah, the nature. I always feel have felt inspired by nature for sure. Yeah, I keep look coming back to your embracing the Buddha within. But yeah, my 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 uh, uncle is a Buddhist, so like he got me that. That's great. A few years ago, which, yeah, we're here for the spirituality and learning different things. But you know what? I feel like I tell this. I've been telling this. To, <laughs> The last few people I've been talking to, I feel like that lava lamp they can't see over there. I just feel like like just uh, when they break away and they gush out and like, you know, you're just trying to break free and trying to understand. Oh, yeah, you've things. been looking at the lava lamp. I've been looking at the embracing. Yeah, the yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, the lava yeah. lamp's good. <laughs> lava lamp's good, man, especially if you're shrooms. I feel like a lava lamp or a bacteria or some weird shit. Um, but yeah, let's hear another song. People here, I want to hear that good music. What do you feel like playing on the beautiful nylon string? i 
eternity is just a word to me the breeze is whispering the trees just oh no that's not right eternity is just a word to me i don't believe i won't believe i can't believe mythology Every fairy tale has a disappointing ending, but they all begin so promising. They always start so true and so good. Reality is all a dream to me. The breeze whispering the trees just reaching for the sun and to know that sun is not the only is not the only one ah, and to know that sun is not the only one who needs a fairy tale I'm, uh, ah, this is reminding me. I've been in like weird cave mode. I'm going to have to do some practicing when I get out to yeah. play these songs. I still have to, there's some turnarounds I haven't memorized. Bro, that was like, that was like, it was so peaceful. And I was just, like, I don't know, it's just like kind of closing my eyes and I'm in the meadow or something. <laughs> cool. And, like, that's where, yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey it, that's, it's, that's where it took me. So, you know, <laughs> nice. that's, that's what, that's what, uh, the goal for that then yeah you uh, you hit that yeah there's something about like well first of all you have a beautiful voice you should just know that you Thanks, probably Grant. i mean how were you always gifted with that beautiful voice or would you say it was like you trained i definitely had definitely trained at, um and i was in choir and stuff and mm -hmm. um but i think you're born with, to a certain extent with that yeah. i always wondered about that because like my dad does not have a good voice and okay. like when, yeah. when we were like kids in church you know like i would just sing and could sing and he we called it directional singing you know like yeah. he, he would look at the notes and know if it went up and it went down yeah. like there was no like you know mm -hmm. um but yeah you're talking about your grandma and your face you trace it to my grandfather on my mom's side taught himself to play the piano mm. love music so but yeah i i think um certainly there it was weird because i feel like i found my voice more over time because mm -hmm. when you're in choirs you're kind of purposefully trained to not be a solo voice yeah it's supposed to be part of yeah. whatever you know mm -hmm. so then you have to kind of find what it is yeah yeah, I mean, I feel like anyone, well, someone told me this, and I kind of agree, but then I tried to do it, and I was like, oh, fuck, but I don't know. He's, he was saying to me, a friend was saying, like, anyone can sing. It's uh, Your voice is an instrument. You just have to practice. Now, it probably won't be like Mariah Carey or someone like that, of course, but, like, you can make it sound at least decent if you practice every day like an instrument. And I was like... Well, yeah, I'm also true. like, this is like... <clears throat> the worst I've, did i have my legs crossed when i was singing that it's terrible voice because it's all like oh, breath right here <sighs> oh, 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 you know 
there you go. But like even then, I've you gotta stand up to get that. Yeah, yeah. Thing working right. Yeah. You know we're gonna. I'm also to, feeling it a little bit today. You feel yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I wonder how the hippies did it when they were all sitting in a circle with the crossed legs and everything, how they're breathing and then smoking that weed and everything. I was like, God damn. That's not good, yeah. It's not good at all. <laughs> That's the other thing. David Crosby passed away. That mm. fucking blows my mind. Yeah, that one is a funny one for me because I don't, weirdly... Did you I mean, listen to him a lot or not really? No, that's that's my, I mean, folk music, Americana, that's like my genre, I guess, if you have to end up in one, but for some reason i miss those guys i that that just didn't it wasn't a big a big part of my mm -hmm. my my ex, uh, what i was exposed to so i know he's a big i mean obviously i know it's a huge deal for a lot of people and a cornerstone of of the building blocks of that but mm -hmm. personally i didn't really feel a feel that one in quite the same way as i felt others it was funny yeah that, that i had a funny whole relationship with it because it was like yeah that's the name you hear all the time and yeah, he was really funny on twitter oh yeah he, <laughs> he was so i feel like person i really i mean i call some other people but yeah he was very active for his age on twitter and just yeah. like laying it on people and roasting and all this shit and memes. Yeah. i was like like this guy out here and uh, i also like i think to a fault i'm skeptical of famous fame and famous people with some exceptions in there mm -hmm. like i wonder why we put certain members of our species on these pedestals and yeah i i've just i've been entertained and had my mind blown and been just so moved continually by people yeah. i've never read about in a book or well that's how it was for me with joni mitchell well, yeah, well, she's yeah, she's one you read about in the book, but well, she's also freaking amazing. Well, I didn't know anything about her. My mom was just like, it's a fan girl, and like has in like, like when I learned about Joni, I learned about her painting side. I didn't know oh, about. Wow. That's how my mom introduced me to her. So I didn't understand, you know. Then a friend mentioned about she's a folk singer and she's pretty big and an activist and all this stuff. Yeah. And I was like, what are you talking about? She just has these groovy paintings that I like, and she did a few <laughs> album covers. And they're like, sir. No, you need to do a deeper research on it. Go do your facts. Yeah. And then, and then I did. And then I was like, Jesus, the song she's writing about. And then, you know, about the earth and taking better care of it. And, For you know, sure. That's what Big Yellow Taxi is about, you know? Yeah, she nailed that one. It, 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 she didn't, and, like, even when she wrote that, it wasn't what it became. You no, know? no, no. It, it, exactly. And, like, like, there's some people where it's like, like, I understand why we put them on a pedestal because they did so much. Right. For that's true. Yeah, I was. I, that's a good point, Grant. I mean, that is true. Like her and then I think maybe, I guess you could maybe Dylan, I guess. Oh, yeah. Dylan's huge. I mean, there's no there's no one like Bob Dylan. Dylan, the band. Um, the band. See, those guys, like, for me, this is maybe a funny one, but Bruce Springsteen is, like, a huge influence yeah. when I was growing up. Oh, he was, like, East my hero. Oh, Street Radio's only in my dad's car. Don't touch nice the radio. Dad. Yeah. Nice, Dad. Yeah, only East Street Radio. <laughs> and uh, he always told me um, his favorite member, you know, of course, everyone liked Bruce, but he was Clarence. Oh, uh, yeah. Clarence, Clarence was the guy. Loves Clarence. He was the best, and he said when he passed and he got his nephew, wasn't the same still. No, it wasn't. And also Danny, the, the organ player, yeah, also yeah, died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is just, you know, it's like, yeah, and then people die, and then there's going to be more new guys. And, and it's, but it's like, you just, but then why do we sometimes, even going deeper into this, like where we like, you, like, you have a connection with the OG group, but then when people do like spin off, like on shows or something, or like even bands when they put in new people, you're just like, oh, it's not the same. I know. And it's I like know. we haven't even given them that person a chance yet. I feel bad. I understand like there's big shoes to fill, but like you should, like. I well, yeah, I mean, to be, I mean, and I'm a huge Bruce fan, yeah. huge Clarence fan. All due respect to Clarence, he was the one that played that Jungle Land solo. Oh, you know it. That's my favorite fucking song. Oh, yeah. I mean, come on. The PM, yeah. Hold and on. in his latter years, he did kind of lose a step. Yeah. And his, is it his nephew? His nephew took over. Yeah, that guy is playing, his saxophone playing is incredible. No, he, definitely. He's like crushing it. It's literally blood related. Like, it's literally, just, Bruce just found off found yeah. that his nephew but played. But he was not the guy that, myth a lot, speaking of mythology, he yeah. wasn't the guy that like blew the doors off a rainy night in a Jersey yeah. club and met Bruce and like, 
you're, you're right. It's not the same. It won't be the same. Because people are magical universes of, en of energy. They combine. And we put another person in this room, and this is an entirely different conversation. It's a whole different vibe. And so, like, but, but it doesn't make it better or worse. It just makes it different. Yeah. I, I, exactly. And it's, uh, music is so crazy that way. Arts, all the arts are that way. Like when you come to something, mm -hmm. if you're an old guy, older guy, and you saw Bruce and the E Street Band in 1978 in a theater for whatever it was, ten bucks, and mm -hmm. it just like Bruce crushed it, and he was 29 and He's whatever. Bringing that energy. Yeah. yeah. Like of course <laughs> you see you see like you see now and it's not going to be that. But I never saw that. You never saw that. I never saw that. My dad saw it so many times, and then he saw, I think the last three shows, it just wasn't there. Like, he. Well, it wasn't what he saw. It's a new thing now. It's a new thing. So he saw the last three shows he saw. So he saw Bruce Lee's 10 times in his life. Mm -hmm. And the last three of them was the first one was when Clarence was sitting on a chair. He couldn't yeah. stand. Second one was with no Clarence. And the third was with the nephew. And yeah. he's like. It just he, he like it it morphed his thoughts on like yeah and stuff and it he changed and he's trying to remember the ones in the earlier year when he was a young buck just out there just rocking hard and you know he was Bruce Springsteen man he brought that Americana you know the blue I know, but even work. Bruce Springsteen will die yeah that's the thing and like age the, you know the, he's we gotta just give it out I got a shout out because he's he's out back on the road now and I watched. Dude, the guy is still singing. He's yeah. 73. Yeah. He's singing in the original keys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, his contemporaries are dropping those suckers down a perfect fourth, some of them. Mm-hmm. You know, like, John Bon Jovi can not sing anymore. Oh, no. Fact. <laughs> but Bob Dylan can't sing anymore. <laughs> Never could, though. Yeah, yeah that's, that's so true. That's a, Some people will disagree on you that one, but, but he no, really... I, know. The, the, I, I love Dylan's voice, actually. But he... I wonder, does he change... He's an interesting one because he, I don't think he changes keys. I don't though. think he does. I and think he just squawks and, through them. Yeah, and well, yes, that's a perfect word, squat, because like you're paying for these high price tickets, and then you're just getting a dude who sounds like he's like choking. Can I something. tell you one little funny thing? Go the, for it. So you know his like latter day, of like I guess since Love and Theft, kind of the songwriting style he has where it's just a refrain. Mm -hmm. So it's like, um, it's like. Blah 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 on Fifty Second Street. Yeah, yeah. And then the second verse is blah 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 on Fifty Second Street, and that's like, you know, there's so many songs he has that are like that in his later years, where there's not a chorus, there's just a refrain. This one on the new album that I have called Opening Up. What is it? From, I'm not gonna do the whole thing, but from the canyons of computers through the sunset and the dawn, they are telling what they think is true and whose side they are on. There's a shadow in the alley, the boys are talking tough, it's opening. Yeah. It's opening up. And then from then on, blah, 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 blah. It's opening. It's opening up. I was joking with my friend because I was thinking when I was writing it, like, I'm just going to write this like a Bob Dylan song. Yeah. I'm going to write a bunch of stuff because it was when we were opening up and I was like, God, what a weird idea. So, but like, it's like a Dylan, like, it's opening. Heck yeah. It's opening yeah. up. It's like, a, I think of it as like a. That's a, that's like an interesting, a, like, I wonder what inspired him to go do that. You know, that I don't know. But it's totally like, there's a shadow in the alley. The boys are talking to. It's opening. <laughs> that, you have the perfect impression of him. It's opening. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. It was it was a nice little, like, uh, Dylan inspired uh, prop, you know. It took the pressure off. It was like, I don't have to come up with everything. 
Yeah. Everything I'll just I'll just say a bunch of stuff and then end with opening up. <laughs> opening up. There yeah. we go. Well, that's like you even said Fifty Second Street. I'm pretty sure Bruce has a song like a, a New York uh, Serenade. I oh, think it, did, did, did he say? Hey, you know your stuff. Well, there's Incident on Fifty Seventh yeah, Street. Yeah, and then there's that one. Yeah. Oh, tr- I mean. My dad forced this on me. Not didn't force. That's not the right <laughs> word. He like engraved it in my head. Yeah, I know. Dude. Of course, I know my stuff. Spanish Johnny drove in from the underworld last night. That's a great yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. It's bruised arms, a broken rhythm, and a beautiful Buick, but dressed just like dynamite. I mean, really, when you say, "What did you? Where did you? Where did you have the?" love for music it it was bruce really was where it's i listened to like heavy metal and rock and roll and stuff and then like hair metal yeah and then when i got into bruce i was like oh you can like be literate you can mm. like tell stories yeah and put them to music yeah that's definitely. cool so if you think if bruce never existed do you think you would be doing that? Oh, interesting. Yeah, we're getting good. We're good. The questions are getting. Well, yeah, juicy. we have to find a way to bring this to a close because I have to go and I have to eat something before I go. So oh shit! Okay, yeah. All how right. are we gonna? Um, all right, all right. Answer the answer that question, and then I'll, I'll while you're answering, I'll think of a way to. Yeah, we have to in. find a way to like. Um, I think yes, I think yes. Mm-hmm. I think I would have still been a creative artist and a musician but i think my music and my writing would, would be, be different. entirely different it it is a hundred percent no one hears it because my voice is high and i'm like whatever I, I no one ever says you sound like springsteen you remind me of springsteen but when people hear that i was inspired by that and then they go then they listen to bruce and they listen to me they're like oh dude that's like what you're doing it's like like, you're like he's it's like because that's how i learned how to write songs was Mm -hmm. his whole songbook i mean yeah well the way to end it all what from your album is there any songs that really came from bruce (sighs) well probably i already played it probably that um never had a home one or um i mean but all of them actually no you know what um, there we go. One, yeah. Got it. Hell yeah. <laughs> Here you go, folks. <clears throat> I'll do it on the, on the guitar, too. Even though it's on the... It's all about the bridge. Bruce is all about the bridge. Mm-hmm. Know it. Um. This nylon. I got it for 50 bucks. Nice. Well, it's good to see my old friends doing well. The situations left behind, the seasons when they fell so far. Well, you give up or you get up and you turn into who you are. And it's good to see my old friends doing well well it's good to see my old friends growing strong they're still the souls I love but they have changed in ways it's almost hard to speak of their sentences are shorter but their paragraphs are long and it's good to see my old friends growing strong all this time all this time all this time and still we're here all this time all this time They knew me at my worst I was broken I was cursed I almost didn't make it But I did And they held me up And walked with me Till I could walk again And it's good to see My old friends doing Well, 
it's good to see my old friends gotta go we're always moving around through the air and through the towns it seems if you stay around too long you just forget about your dreams and it's good to see my old friends gotta go and it's good to see my old friends growing strong and it's good to see my old friends doing well amazing verse verse bridge verse that Bruce. is that, that is the best way to end this whole podcast, John. Really? Oh, great. This is great. This was beautiful. Oh. Will there be an acoustic version of that? I mean, we, I guess there is one now. It's a piano. It's just piano, yeah. But there's something about the acoustic. Which is ah, a, and, and the thing is, more, <laughs> well, that's the whole thing about this album, man, is like everything was written. If this is true, I think it's true. Everything was written on the piano. Yeah, I know, I know. No, I know. no listen. Well, you, so hey, will you tell me? We we got we got we got it on this now. It sounds yeah, amazing, you're right. But, but then there's. Well, it's good to see my old friends doing well. The situations left behind, the seasons when they fell so far. You know, it's different, yeah. but it is what it is. It, I, I don't know. I like, think I okay. just, I like both versions are great. Something about just the guitar, because I am into that whole Americano. Yeah, and just yeah, like, yeah. Like Western, whatever. It's not even Western. Just like, something about the guitar and a, a male singer, just those two instruments. It is that Bruce Springsteen, just like, you're on the road, you're I know. traveling, <laughs> you're riding a horse, or, or whatever. <laughs> whatever it is. I, whatever you can call it. You're, you're on the road, road, you're traveling. Let me just like accompany keep talking you're on the road you're <laughs> traveling and you and your gal and your your dogs and fillies are just trying to make it to the next place and goddamn that storm hell in the storm is coming in hot yeah i mean yeah sure <laughs> yeah something i love it sounded like some like <laughs> entry to an intro of a movie on here but, oh uh, man hey thanks for inviting me to come over and talk well, on your podcast well, thanks for thanks for letting me shave my my beard uh for the thing and thanks for uh yeah just thanks for well, the hospitality uh, well yeah well always you're always welcome here you know we have a know bike that. we have a bike date we have a bike date what i'm excited for yeah um I, we gotta have you back on again because there's so much more like i just like like the song your songwriting ideas folk and like well i'm th- i want to do a group one so maybe i get you and dan come over together and we just oh, that's interesting we all just hang out and just talk yeah yeah um, yeah i'm here for that but um yeah i'll let you get to it for everyone who's listening, um, thank you for listening. This how is- long? We're at two and a half hours. How long is your usual podcast? I like the long form. Yeah, I like the long form too. I've done one. Uh, I've done a six hour one. <laughs> yeah, we started up early. Yeah, that one. Was- I want to beat that. Yeah. Look, Next we- time I come, I want to beat we're it. We're beating the six hour one. Six hours. Yeah, wow. that one. That one got like it, that was a good one. I'll send you the link to that one. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, if, for those who are interested and should. Check out John Elliott's music. The hereafter um, is here.com. Here. Well, I'll, I'll put a link in the description yeah, cool. and everything. Or you can just Google John Elliott music. But if you Google John Elliott, you're going to get a clothing designer who yeah. sells like $400 sweatpants. <laughs> That's the problem with Grant Evans. There's this, this Grant Evans. Yeah, who's like, your guy? Who's your guy? He's <laughs> like some dude. Uh, um, oh, I forget what the right word is. What do you call people who are dinosaur experts? Oh, paleontologist. Yeah, yeah, he's one of that. Oh, that's right. He's from Australia, and he, but he passed away. It's just kind of hard to be the dead dude now. So I'm really trying to beat the dude, the Aussie dude, and become the number one Grant. Yeah, it's it's a whole battle. I was the number one John Elliott for a long time, and then like ten years ago, this guy started buying Google ads and selling five hundred dollar hoodies, and the whole thing just went. So you gotta get a Google. You gotta ad. add music. You, you, no, you, I'm not. I'm not. Gonna you're not gonna do that. Okay, we. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not find a good laugh. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. Um, thanks for listening. Stay hydrated. And, oh yeah, good call. That's that you always tell people. Yeah, I always tell people to stay hydrated. They think it's joking, but no. I mean, like, say they don't know how hot how hot in this room is. Well, and, also, water is. Lo- I mean, yeah, it's 
if you're stressed out or you're feeling down or whatever, drink a glass of water every time. You oh, can it helps cut me. that and have it be in your intro. Yeah. Oh, fuck <laughs> yeah. You already know that's going to be my clip when, when I do my short clips. Mm -hmm. All right, there you go, everyone. Have a good one.